Let's talk about absences, missed meetings, no shows, all of the above. If I share with you what the culture of the team is and how I handle absences, missed meetings, um, approved absences, <clears throat> all the things of that nature, I clearly share them on paper, I clearly articulate them, and then you show up, excuse me, you don't show up. <laughs> You don't show up to a meeting when you are expected to be there. Not once, but twice. Please do not have the thought in your mind that I am going to uh, be able to help you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I am not Jesus, okay? And although some think this, nor am I a superhero, okay? So you need to be about your business. If you are not going to be able to make a meeting for whatever reason, right? You could be eating cereal on the couch. I don't know that, okay? Particularly if you're working from home or something could really be wrong. If you are able to pick up the phone, you need to pick up the phone. You need to shoot a text. Even if it's five words, I am sick. I cannot make it. Talk later. I'm okay with that. Because it's communication. And communication makes the world go round at work. Particularly for the manager who is having a meeting. And particularly when other directors are there and you're not there. And you have something that you're supposed to report on. I can't help you. My hands are tied, friend. And I don't care what age or group you're in, Gen X, Gen Z, Gen Y, whatever. This is professionalism across the board. And I know many different people have um, have said that professionalism means different uh, different things to them. And that's okay. But if you're on my team, you're going to know what professionalism means to me. Right? And it's not all having to do with how you dress or um, how you talk. But it does have to do also with work ethic, right? You need to understand that communication is imperative on a team. You're not on an island by yourself. You're, you're on a team. And so my suggestion is, is if you struggle on teams, then you might want to look for jobs where you're just working with you and maybe a couple other people. Particularly, do not sign up to work on a team Um that is high performing, right? If you know, and you might not know that going in, but you know, a couple of weeks, a month, you will know whether or not a team is just biding their time. And you will know if a team takes pride in being high performing, because if that team is high performing um, or they are working their way there, they are not going to take kindly or lightly to you coming in slacking and not showing up to meetings, not having reports ready, particularly when it crosses lanes with what they do and it makes them feel some kind of way, right? I'm going to tell you right now, if you do that once or twice on a high performing team, they're not going to want to have nothing to do with you. They're, they're going to want to see you go out the door. Because they have worked very hard to get where they are. There's a certain type of person. Um, and there's two sides to each coin. I understand that. Um, for example, if you have a type A personality, sometimes people just need to tell you to relax. Just relax. Okay? <laughs> I'm one of those type of people. Right? But I have since learned on my own personal uh, development journey that there are times when I'm in high gear and there are times when I need to rest and reset and start again, right? And so that I really wanted to share that. And um, I know it helped me. Um, and it helped me particularly because working in a team that is close-knit, that loves to hit their goals, loves to hit their numbers, um, loves to streamline their systems and processes and work smarter and not harder, um, I had to really learn that even in those types of teams, engagement is really, really important, right? And so um, I had to do a lot of work around, even though we like to perform, engagement 
is important. And so I had to do a lot of work around, okay, we like to perform, but I need to edge in some um, engagement, whether that means consistently having cameras on, whether that means a once a month um, where we go out as a team or we do things as a team, or we just talk about our weekends. That's one thing that we've recently started. We just started talking about our weekends um, and now it's taken hold. And so that is increasing the engagement on our team. Um, and so there's balance in everything. I get that. I understand that. But if you're just going to come on a team and not show up and miss meetings and all of that, again, particularly in a team that likes to hit their targets and goals and they like to perform highly, that's not going to go over well, um, with that team or with that manager. So, um, I don't know if that's going to help anybody, but it definitely has helped me, um, and I recently had to share that with a person and it's like, we don't want to let you go. You're a great person, but you cannot be slacking in your work, right? Particularly when uh, I hear a lot on TikTok that people leave managers. Well, managers want to leave people sometimes too. I, I hate to break y'all's heart in TikTok land. <laughs> But sometimes managers want to leave people and you hear a lot on TikTok, document, document everything, document everything. Managers document everything too. We do. We do too. We do too, boo. We do too. We document. Because sometimes it's just not a good fit. And the person may not realize that coming in and the manager may not realize that. But be sure of one thing. Your behavior will not betray you. Ultimately, you will do something that says, I don't really want to be here. I don't want to be here. And ultimately, you will do something for the manager to say, this is not a good fit. And you can go through all of the steps. You can go through coaching. You can, you know, as, as you should, as a manager should, go through coaching with the person, um, reminding of them of what the policy is, um, reminding them about the team culture, reminding them how important it is to communicate. You can do all of that. I've done all of that before, done all the things and taken all of the steps. And it still was not a good fit because the person was simply not mature enough or in a place to be on the team. They weren't there yet. They wanted to slack. They wanted to turn things in when they wanted to turn things in. They wanted to talk to people how they wanted to talk to people. And and some of that, the person was unaware. They didn't have a lot of self-awareness. And so I have grace for that. But I can only have so much grace for that, right? Because then you start to affect the bottom line. You start to affect the many, right? And when you start affecting that, then hard decisions have to be made. And so if you're going to work on a team, know that you are not on that team by yourself. Know that you need to communicate. Know that you need to understand what type of team you are on, right? And teams can be in different phases at different times, right? Six months of the year, they can be super high performing and then boom, they hit a snag, right? I've been doing this for uh, five years and I've seen teams go through forming, norming, uh, forming, storming norming, performing, adjoining. I've, I've seen that and continue to see it. And so you need to understand where your team is, uh, what phase they are in in team development and understand that it is a process and it is a cycle. But knowing where you are can help the manager um, serve the team in the best way. And it can help any person on the team understand understand that, okay, we're in a norming phase right now. And these are the things that need to be happening. These are the things that need to be seen. I just recently did a, um, I was about to say TED talk. Oh, prophesy. Um, I just recently did a training with my team about team development and the stages and they were so grateful and they were so thankful. They were like, Oh, this is where we're at. <laughs> so it is useful to, as a manager, to let the team know where they are, but team members should also know where they are so that they can best serve in their role and work alongside their team. So don't be missing meetings and then expect somebody to move heaven and earth for you because it's not going to happen. All right. I just wanted to share that. Talk to you soon.